Hi everyone, welcome to Cash Flows. We're going to take a look now at some strategies you can use to solve the indirect and the direct method of your cash flow type question. Generally speaking, these are really large questions that you'll see on your final exam, worth probably the most marks on your final exam, and you'll want to do really well. So let's start off by the indirect method. To use the indirect method to solve the operating section of your cash flow solution, it really helps to develop four rules. Now, as you work through solving the cash flow problem, one method works better than anything else, and that's the journal entry method. When we look at changes in cash, assume that the other part of the entry is cash. So if it's a debit cash, cash is going up. If it's a credit cash, cash is going down. So let's solve the four rules for the indirect method. Now, first thing before we go any further into these rules, recognize that with the operating section of the indirect cash flow statement, the first item is net income. So everything evolves around the net income, and that's why these four rules are important for the indirect. So let's get started. Rule number one. For example, if our inventory went up $10,000, how would you do the entry? Remember, when we do these entries, the other part of the entry is cash. Well, we would do debit, inventory, 10,000, credit, cash, 10,000. So rule number one is that current assets going up, cash going down. And it works basically the opposite way as well. If current assets are going down, cash is going up. That's rule number one. And it's very important that before you start your final exam, you write these four rules out on the front page so that you'll have this for you as a guide as you basically work through your final. Rule number two. Let's look at current liabilities. We're going to basically pay down our accounts payable $5,000. If we were to pay down our accounts payable $5,000, what would be the entry? Well, it would be debit accounts payable, $5,000. Credit cash, $5,000. So what you'll see here with regards to current liabilities is that they move in the same direction as cash. Current liabilities down, cash down. And then the opposite is true. Current liabilities up, cash going up. So those are the first two rules. Let's establish rule three and four. Now as I mentioned at the start of this video, with the indirect method, you basically have your starting amount as net income. And we're tying everything in a lot of ways into the net income. Well, in that net income are items that are non-cash. And of course, in a cash flow statement, we only want to examine the cash items. So here's an example of this. We've got revenue of $1 million. We've got expenses of 800000 and then I'm just going to add depreciation of 100,000 here. And what we're going to be left with is an operating income of 100,000. Now, this is cash. This is cash. But is depreciation a cash item? The answer is no. That's an accounting generated number. So because we're only focusing on cash items, we have to basically exclude the depreciation. We don't want that. So rule number three is that when we see depreciation, we add it back because it is a non-cash item. And rule number four works the same way as this. Losses and gains, for example, from the sale of assets, are generated because of differences between the cash that we receive and the net book value. A net book value, we'll see in a moment here, is generated by what we paid for an item, less the depreciation. So these gains and losses, they happen. 
Losses, of course, cause this to go lower, and gains, of course, will cause this to go higher. But these losses and gains are non-cash items, and therefore have to be reversed out. So losses, they work the same way as depreciation. We add those back. Gains, we subtract those out. And those are our four rules with regards to the indirect method. And it's very important for you to have those four rules understood. Now, let's get into the question here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to help you solve the investing section. The investing section is something that's going to be the same regardless of whether or not the question is going to be solved using the direct or the indirect method. Remember, the direct and indirect method is only for the operating sections. And just a little side hint, the direct method is not as hard as it appears. It's actually, in a lot of ways, I think it's easier. And it's certainly a much better description of where your cash is going. So spend a few moments, understand the groupings of doing the direct method, and use the journal entries to figure out if cash is going up or down, just like I showed you in class. Do journal entries for each, group them properly, that's how you get your number. Also, as a side note, make sure you really show your work on how you did this on your final, because if you notice, a lot of these are worth 1.5 or two marks. Therefore, if there's four items in there, there is basically 0.5 for each of those four. So if you get three out of four right, you can at least still get 1.5. But do the marker, your instructor, a favor and show your work very clearly and very neatly. Let's get into the investing section. How do you do this? Well, as it happens in accounting many times, T accounts are gold. They work really well. So take a look at your opening balance sheet. Put in your opening balances. One, two, one, five for equipment, and then it ends one, two, five, one. Same thing with your accumulated depreciation. And what happens is that in the additional information, and also on your income statement, you have the clues. You have the clues to solve the missing numbers. And once you have those missing numbers solved, you'll be able to determine how much depreciation was there. What was the cash received for the sale of the equipment? How much did you spend in cash to purchase equipment? And that's what you need to do, is you have to recognize the fact that there's missing numbers for you to solve. It's a puzzle. So you start with the additional information a lot of times and go from there. So how do you do this? Once again, you create journal entries and it's as simple as that. So if you go to the additional information, it tells you that there was a piece of equipment sold for $65,000 cash. That originally cost $65,000 was sold for cash. Sorry about that. So you start with your entry. If the equipment was originally worth $65,000, you no longer have it. So therefore, credit equipment, 65,000. You can also update your T account then. You can show that 65,000 on the credit side for your equipment. You are also told that it was depreciated by 20% at the time of sale. So 65,000 times 20% is equal to 13,000. This no longer exists because you now sold the asset. So accumulated depreciation, 13,000. You have that number, update your T accounts. Update your T account here, 13,000. Now, you also have to make sure that you go and take a look at your income statement. As I mentioned, when you sell assets, generally speaking, you don't sell them exactly at your net book value. You're gonna have gains or losses on these sales. If you go into your income statement, do you notice a gain or a loss on the sale of equipment? Yes, you do. You see a gain of 6,000. While we know gains are on the credit side, so there's your gain of 6,000 there. So what are you missing? Well, you're missing a debit. And of course, that debit represents the cash the cash of $58,000 
that you received for the equipment. So if you go to the solution, we now have the first item in investing activities done. Sale of equipment, 58,000. Right there is our number. That's really important. But you'll notice that we also have items here that are missing when we take a look at our T accounts. We need to know how much depreciation we had. We need to know if we bought any equipment. So if you take 1215 and you subtract it out of 65, you're going to get obviously a lower balance. The difference between that balance is 101,000. That means that you spent 101,000 purchasing equipment. Well, there's the second part of your investing activities. You've got purchase of equipment, 101,000. Of course, you're showing that as a negative number because that's cash going out. You also have your accumulated depreciation here. You solve for this missing number, 68,000. 68,000 represents the amount of depreciation that we're talking about. Depreciation is rule number three in the indirect method. So you add that back, that's how we calculate the depreciation method. So the key thing to recognizing how to do the investing section T accounts and follow a flow. Also, do the journal entry here, the sale entry. Fill in the missing pieces and you've got it. Thank you everyone. Hope you do well.